Welcome to another Cold Fusion video. Rockstar Games have almost single-handedly revolutionized the world of gaming. Titles such as Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption sit in the hearts of many gamers. But how did two brothers who worked at a music label and knew nothing about programming or game design create one of the greatest video game publishing companies in history? In this video, we'll find out. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Grand Theft Auto was one of the first titles to start pushing the boundary of gaming. There were games like Mortal Kombat and other graphically violent games available, but Grand Theft Auto was different. It was realistic. It had real-world scenarios with video game consequences. On the other hand, games like Mortal Kombat were set in science fiction and tailored mostly to gamers. Rockstar wanted to make gaming for everyone. They steered away from sci-fi and in the process made their games controversial, even being banned in multiple countries and facing class action lawsuits. But the controversy only made their games more popular. The Rockstar story starts with two brothers from London, Sam and Dan Hauser. The brothers had quite the Rockstar upbringing, which would later influence the DNA of their gaming company. Their mother was a famous actress, Geraldine Moffat. She starred alongside Michael Caine in the movie Get Carter, which pushed the edges of controversy with its crime, sex and style. Their father was a musician who ran the most popular jazz club in England. Here, the two brothers often hung out with famous jazz musicians during the genre's peak. In the 1980s, Sam came across something that would change his life video games. When he discovered them, he fell in love with the concept of being able to transport him to another world. Later, the brothers discovered something that would change their perception of the world. It was hip-hop. Their love for rebellion and hate for civil order was exactly the outlet that hip-hop provided them. For his 18th birthday, Sam's dad took him to New York where he bought leather jackets and Jordans. He would roam the New York streets as if he was an East Coast rapper. One day, Sam was having lunch with his father, who was an executive from the record label BMG. He asked his father, why is everyone in the record business so old? Why don't you have young people working there? This question would actually land Sam a job at the record label. It was also this brash attitude that led both Sam and his brother to be given the lead of a new gaming business that the record label had just purchased, but didn't know what to do with. From here, they began pushing the boundaries of video games, despite having no experience in the area. In 1997, they would create a top-down driving and shooting game, which would later become one of the greatest franchises in history. They originally called it Race and Chase, but settled on the name Grand Theft Auto. In 1998, BMG Interactive was purchased by a company called Take-Two. This led Sam, Dan and two other executives to move to New York and create a new subsidiary, which they would call Rockstar Games. The original 2D versions of GTA did well, but it wasn't until the franchise went to 3D in GTA 3 that the Rockstar Studio set themselves apart. What made Rockstar unique at the time was the idea of giving gamers complete free will. If you wanted, you could follow the storyline and do the missions, or if you were in a more chaotic mood, you could roam the streets freely causing havoc. The open world is one of the most important aspects of the game. Yes, it is violent, but the freedom to do bad things, take a joyride or get a burger is what makes their games great. And this is what first drew me to the GTA series. It was just so much fun to do whatever you wanted in a fictional world. Rockstar was founded with a mission statement that video games were the next mass market entertainment medium, that they were uniquely interesting and powerful, and that we, as a company, would serve two masters to prove this fact, combining the production values of movies with an obsession with gameplay above all else. As Rockstar began pioneering the industry with its adult content, they increasingly wanted to make video games that were cool and not just for geeks and gamers. In 2002, with GTA Vice City, that's exactly what they did. Draped in neon, Vice City was 1980s Miami. Here, players could live out their own Scarface story, and still, today, it's the 44th best-selling game of all time. Paired with other success like Midnight Club, Max Payne, and Red Dead, the studio soon became an industry leader. In the gaming world, the brothers were truly rock stars. The studio would keep pushing the edges of video games in terms of quality, game design, and storytelling, but their games would soon bring controversy. They became the main target for politicians, fearing the impacts of video game violence on the youth. This controversy ultimately made Rockstar Games even more popular. People just wanted what others told them that they couldn't have. In 2004, they would release Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, the 21st best-selling game of all time. It features gang warfare across a fictional combination of Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Las Vegas. The map was an extensive open world where missions were optional, allowing players to simply explore and do what they wanted. Almost everything was interactive and customizable. The main character, CJ, even got fat or built muscle depending on your activity. But Rockstar knew their limits and even cut out scenes when they thought it was too much. 
One scene was an adult interaction which was cut out but not entirely removed from the game's code as untangling it would have taken too many resources. Once the game hit PC, people began modifying the code for cheats in different gameplay conditions. Soon the hidden scene was discovered and through a software patch made playable. The scene, dubbed Hot Coffee, would result in numerous court cases against Rockstar for its content rating. It was previously rated M, but now had to be converted to adults only. The recall of the game cost $25 million, and the adults only rating stopped the game from being stopped in the majority of stores as they refused to carry adult rated content. One of the Rockstar brothers, Sam Hauser, would even be called to Capitol Hill for a hearing. The case would be settled in 2009, and Rockstar refuses to ever discuss hot coffee ever again. Their bad boy image fed their popularity. This time, however, they needed to hit the brakes. As the years passed from San Andreas, people awaited Rockstar's next hyper-violent game. So in 2006, they released Table Tennis. No violence, no story, just a simple game to show off their new game engine. But this didn't mean Rockstar was done with their iconic style. Later that year, Rockstar would release Bully, a game which pits students against bullies. Most of the violent scenes were schoolyard fights. Their next game, Manhunt 2, was so violent that it received an adults-only rating and was effectively banned around the world. This forced Rockstar to tone it down in order to be able to actually sell the game. Though for Rockstar, they could afford some banning because GTA was their main cash cow, and it was going well. And soon, the next GTA would again remind people what Rockstar could do. GTA 4 was focused around New York's underbelly, and it was another huge success. It ranks 24th on the best-selling games list of all time. The Rockstar Advanced Game Engine, or Rage, was a close-sourced original game engine that allowed GTA 4 to be in HD. The game cost an estimated $100 million to produce, and Rockstar left no stone unturned. They even hired private investigators to track down lost musicians to purchase the rights to their songs. But their biggest game was yet to come. GTA 5 is still the best-selling game of all time, pushing $6 billion of revenue. That's more than the top two highest-grossing Hollywood movies of all time combined, Avatar and Avengers Endgame. The first billion in sales came within the first three days. It cost $250 million to make, with the downloadable content providing years of continuous online gameplay. As you can imagine, the game was no small feat. It took a thousand pages of script, eight production studios, and months of voice and motion capture. They talked to FBI agents, experts in the mafia, and street gangs just to get the best possible experience for the player. Rockstar had done it again. The map was massive, the graphics were unbelievable at the time, and the story revolved around three main characters which were interconnected and developed with the game's progression. It was the culmination of all the great things from the previous GTA games, in a new and exciting world. And just recently, Rockstar released Red Dead Redemption 2 to massive critical and public acclaim, with a sprawling landscape, an immersive story, and outstanding graphics where sometimes he just had to stop playing and look around. All of this had undoubtedly caused a lot of excitement for the next GTA game. And seeing that GTA 5 was released nearly six years ago, it surely can't be long now. During the release of Red Dead Redemption 2, Dan Hauser was quoted as being relieved that they released Red Dead Redemption 2 instead of GTA 6 because of the speed of current cultural shifts. As the main writer for the GTA series, Dan said he was unsure that they would ever do a GTA 6, with America being so polarized between the left and right. He stated that the extremes of both sides were beyond parody, and people would be angry with whatever they did. He goes on to say that if the game was released today, it would be out of date within two minutes. This suggests that the new GTA would be set in a different time. Some rumors point to the return of the 1980s in a Vice City world. Regardless, fans are excited, and so am I. However, while there hasn't been an announcement for GTA 6, you can bet that Rockstar is working on it. It's claimed that the new GTA will arrive on next generation gaming consoles due to the performance and size requirements. GTA 6 is rumored to be the biggest GTA Rockstar have ever tried their hands at. A company that's committed to giving consumers complete freedom of choice has become something that's ever rarer as time passes. But it's worked out for the Hauser brothers and their company Rockstar. From their affluent but rebellious beginnings, they've revolutionized gaming forever. Freedom combined with the best high quality game design and immersive storylines fit for a Hollywood movie have made Rockstar games second to none. For the brothers, it's just about perfecting a craft and making a good product. Dan Hauser speaks, quote, Our goal as a company isn't for people to say that Rockstar has got a good game design but bad stories, or good stories and bad game design. We want them to say, Rockstar makes good games. It's up to us to make the best stuff we can make. It's not necessarily up to us to shout from the rooftops about how clever we are, how progressive we are, or how sophisticated we are. It's our place to make stuff that's as good as it can be. 
And I think that's an important lesson for everyone. If you are in the business of making something, do the best that you can. So, that wraps up our look at Rockstar Games. Let me know what your favourite Rockstar game is in the comment section below.